first off, I'd like to say good morning and welcome and thank you all for coming today. Obviously, this is our 2014 year-end review. Uh, I'll start off with uh, letting you know that 2014, the year 2014, was certainly a busy year for the Wichita Police Department. As such, I wanted to take a little different approach than in previous years, taking a more comprehensive look at 2014. You know, obviously, through uh, us visiting with the public that we worked on the with Wichita State on the departmental organizational project. We also continue to attend meetings and work with the community on issues related to crime and the fear of crime. Despite all that we had going on, we saw crime rates remain relatively flat for the year. You have in front of each of you those numbers and I will be happy to take questions at the end of this briefing. I've also taken the opportunity to invite executive staff to also be available and talk about what's going on or what has been going on in their respective divisions for 2014 and also be here for questions at the end. Let's start with some of the highlights of 2014. Since August 2014, we've had a new management team in place. Deputy Chief John Spear is the commander of the Support Services Division. Deputy Chief Hassan Ramza is the commander of the Investigations Division. And finally, Captain Gavin Siler, Siler assumed command of the Field Services Division as the interim deputy chief upon my appointment to interim chief. Our team of commanders has done a tremendous job of leading the department and producing outstanding results. Some of those accomplishments include our work on investigating homicides, gang investigations, the body-worn camera project, the new recruiting initiative, the departmental assessment, as I mentioned earlier, numerous special assignments regarding or targeting crime trends in the field, the homeless outreach team, our new patrol car paint scheme, just to name a few items that we've worked on. We also, during the year, made a total of 60 promotions. We promoted two deputy chiefs, seven captains, 12 lieutenants, 17 sergeants, and 22 detectives. That's quite a bit of promotions. And this is also upon <coughs> graduating one recruit class with a number of 21 brand new officers in that class. It should also be pointed out that we also had 22 retirements for the year. And this is not uh, foreign to a lot of companies out there, other departments of what's going on across the nation. Now I want to quickly highlight our crime statistics. And again, I remind you, you have a copy in front of you. These are mainly, there's a self-explanatory in most cases, but we wanted to point out just a few items. Overall, Wichita has seen a 2.64 decrease in crime for 2014. Part one crimes are down about 1.65 percent. Now as a reminder, I'll let you know what the part one crimes are. They're homicides, rape, robbery, ag assaults, burglaries, larceny, and auto thefts. Of those categories, homicides are up 52.94 percent. Rape, rapes are up 8.1 percent. Robberies are up by 15.1 percent. Ag assaults are up 3.7 percent. Burglaries are down 1 percent. Larcenies are down 4.7 percent. And auto thefts are down 10.3 percent. Again, this is overall crime for Wichita. We did see a overall 2.64 percent decrease. Clearance rates are also up, are up uh, when compared to years past. Gang statistics are lower than all in years past as well. This is primarily to law enforcement in the community working together proactively on gang crime issues. Finally, our traffic fatalities were lower than last year and DUI arrests were comparable to 2014. With that, as I said, I would have my commanders also 
come up and also give what their shops have done uh, for the year 2014. I'll start off with Deputy Chief John Spear with the Support Services Division. Good morning, everyone. As uh, the Chief stated, that 2014 was a very busy year for us. And I wanted to provide a, about three highlights of some of the things that the Support Services Division uh, worked on and that it con consumed a lot of our time last year. One of which is uh, something that's been covered a lot in the media and talked about at the various meetings we've been to, and that's the cameras. Um, we've spent a lot of time working on this camera project. The big uh, piece of this was identifying the funding source for it because it's going to cost between one and $1.5 million, and obviously I think uh, we're getting down to numbers on the uh, size of the staff that we're going to have to hire to support the camera uh, program that we're going to have here. Uh, as some of you are aware and, and have already covered, we uh, just took a trip to Fort Worth, a very icy trip to Fort Worth the other day, and looked at the Fort Worth Police Department. The reason that we went down there is because Fort Worth is one of the biggest metropolitan areas in our region that has the camera systems implemented on a much larger basis. They have about five times the cameras that we currently have, but they are currently at a point with about 500 cameras that we are going to be at once we implement uh, cameras on all of our field officers by the end of the year. Another thing that we've worked on uh, in 2014 that will obviously be carried over into 2015 is our recruiting. Uh, as you can see off to my right, there is uh, the first recruiting poster that we did. We, uh, and the theme of this is WSU and kids out here uh, at uh, Coke Arena. The, uh, as you can see, some of those kids are quite little and it was very challenging to get them to sit still for uh, the photo, uh, but we were able to uh, get that accomplished. And we also took some video of them that we're gonna use later on as well. This is the first of four recruiting posters that we're going to do in 2015. The uh, second poster, which we're going to be working on, or we're working on right now, is going to uh, be focused towards veterans and recruiting uh, veterans to the police department. Obviously, uh, we need a police force and we have to have police officers fill these positions. So this is something we're definitely going to be uh, focusing on throughout the year. We're going to have two other themed posters as the year goes on. We're going to try to turn out one every quarter this year. As I stated, this is number one. The veteran poster is number two. And then we're currently working on the other two themes, and, and we'll have them out before the end of the year. Finally, Support Services Division, as you're also aware of and that I've worked on, uh, myself and Deputy Chief Ramza, uh, was the WSU assessment. Uh, myself and uh, Deputy Chief Ramza were the liaisons for WSU and uh, spent a lot of time meeting and doing research and providing statistics and organizing uh, police personnel and staff to participate in this assessment. We're currently still trying to uh, digest all of the details of that as you are uh, as well. Um, and we're going to uh, now get into what the manager described as the heavy lifting part of this thing. We're gonna start drilling down and trying to get some of the things that were identified in the assessment uh, implemented and we're going to have, be having meetings starting up uh, real soon. We're going to have meetings starting up real soon uh, in regards to uh, the actual implementation of some of the things that were identified in the assessment. Um, that kind of covers the, the three main things that the Support Services Division uh, worked on. I'd like to uh, introduce now Deputy Chief Gavin Siler from Field Services. Good morning. Uh, I um, want to thank you all for being here. Um, my part of this is the Field Services Division and some of the things that we have done throughout 2014. I'm going to highlight thing, uh, three things just as uh, Deputy Chief Spear did. Uh, first of which is going to be our cars. Uh, we are slowly rolling this, these new cars out uh, as our old cars um, are you know, getting older, getting mileage on them, we are rolling these new cars out. Uh, we uh, developed a committee in early 2014 to look at a new design for our cars. 
the previous design was put in in 2002 and 2003, so it's been quite some time since that was in. So we felt that there was a need for that. Uh, this committee looked across the country to see what other departments were using um, as far as vehicles, as well as what they look like in their paint schemes and uh, design schemes on decals. Um, after they got finished compiling a lot of information, um, they presented this information to all the police officers in the department to get their feedback on what they thought was, was good. Uh, once that was done, uh, we got to this vehicle right here to my left. Um, we have chosen the Charger. Uh, the Dodge pickups are replacing some of our current vans that are going out. And so that will we have four of those that will be on the streets. And then the Chargers and the Tahoes will be of this paint scheme. So some of the things that benefited us in this study that we did was that these vehicles are highly visible because the the stickers and the decals on this are all reflective. Uh, you can see them, they are lit up like a Christmas tree at nighttime. Um, the resale value we felt uh, because it's a solid color vehicle, uh, they would get more out of that at the end. And then as well as when we put pencil to paper, it was about a $1,300 per car savings for the citizens of Wichita. So uh, my second item that I want to talk about is the hot team. Uh, we started this program, which is the Homeless Outreach Team, uh, started that program in 2013, uh, February of that year, and continued it through last year, and we are continuing on now. It is made up of three officers in the Patrol South Bureau. Uh, those officers reach out to the homeless and uh, uh, give them uh, services and provide them basic needs and things of that nature. Um, I've got some handouts that I'm going to be giving you. Uh, they are uh, statistics that we have compiled over the last two years and sh to show you that this program has been a success. We have reached out to this year over 2,600 homeless and uh, here in Wichita. And that's not uh, each individual. I mean, we run into people multiple times. so. Uh, you will see some people and provide them services uh, or get them services when we can. Some of the services that we're providing them, you can see on these sheets, are, uh, and something that I wanted to bring attention to, is that we're providing some of these folks bus tickets to try to get them home to family and friends. Uh, that's where we get some of the housing that we provide to them, is, is that family and friends are willing to get them back on their feet to help them. Um, also, we have uh, provided 170 uh, permanent and um, housing for people. And so you can see, and that is in 2014 only, we've, we accomplished that. So it is a very good program and something that we will be continuing in 2015. The final thing I'd like to talk to you about <coughs> is the special assignment teams that we did in, in the field services division. Uh, each of the bureaus, uh, last year towards the mid to the end of the year uh, we're seeing crime trends increasing in certain areas. We decided uh, to utilize officers coming from patrol, from SCAT, from CP and to use our crime analysts to drill down as to where some of these crimes are occurring, what times of the day, uh, days of the week, that sort of thing to see if we can figure out what's driving these trends and, and that sort of thing. So. Uh, with those, they would work together as teams and targeted offenders um, out in the bureaus. Each of the bureaus has their own team and they work on these, these uh, projects. The majority of these were larcenies and burglaries. And as you can see, uh, we have decreased larcenies and burglaries. Larc uh, burglaries is a 1% decrease for the year and larcenies is a 4.7. What that uh, translates into is about 737 incidents of crime that we're not responding to because of their efforts. So that is a, three things that are going on in the field services division, so I greatly appreciate your time. And I want to introduce uh, Deputy Chief Son Ramza from Investigations. Uh, good morning. I'm going to uh, highlight a couple of items that are going on in the investigation division uh, in relation to 2014. 
First, I'd like to start off by uh, discussing the uh, homicides from uh, last year. We had a total of 26 homicides in 2014. Uh, of those 26 homicides, two of those cases remain unsolved at this point. Uh, the first one is Kelsey Shaw, with a 23-year-old female killed on March 9, 2014 in the 1000 block of North Cleveland. Uh, that case remains unsolved. Our uh, second victim is Nicole Saldana, 24-year-old female. Uh, she was killed on May 13, 2014 in the 3500 block of East Roseberry. Again, both cases remain unsolved at this time, and uh, we still ask for the public's help in uh, solving those cases. Uh, we ask that anyone that has information call our investigations division at 268-4181 or Crime Stoppers at 267-2111. Uh, in regards to uh, gang crimes last year, uh, our investigators continue to work on our comprehensive gang plan, uh, developing partnerships with the district attorney's office as well as the U.S. attorney's office to uh, provide uh, additional follow-up and investigations in regards to crimes that occur in the community regarding gang violence. Based on those efforts last year, we are able to charge 172 gang members in district court. Uh, as well as indicting 13 federally in federal court for their crimes. Uh, based on those investigations, approximately 72 firearms were also seized. Uh, again, these investigations are representative of a collaborative effort working with our law enforcement partners, uh, members of our department, our members of our field <laughs> services, uh, bureau and division as well in investigating these crimes. Uh, last year, uh, we also experienced 28 traffic fatalities in uh, Wichita. Uh, of those uh, cases, we had uh, three individuals charged in those, uh, those particular uh, accidents. Uh, just a uh, highlight in our property crimes uh, bureau as well, uh, we had uh, a number of high profile cases throughout the year. Uh, one of those I want to highlight specifically uh, in this aspect. Uh, we had a burglary, a series of burglaries that occurred uh, in local businesses in which Apple products were stolen from those particular businesses. Uh, some follow-up investigations by investigators as well as our uh, officers in field services were able to identify a suspect in those crimes. Uh, several businesses were hit as a result of this uh, emerging trend. Uh, as a result, on November 5, 2014, uh, officers were able to apprehend our uh, suspect in this case. Uh, subsequent search warrant and follow-up on this case uh, recovered some property related to uh, these particular burglaries as well as other crimes that occurred in the community. Uh, as a result, overall, uh, the suspect was charged uh, with 11 counts of burglary and theft based on these crimes. Uh, again, uh, the investigations division as well as cooperative efforts with the district attorney's office uh, U.S. Attorney's Office were able to successfully prosecute a number of suspects in 2014 in relation to a variety of crimes that occurred in Wichita. Uh, we continue to ask for the public support again in uh, trying to solve our unsolved homicide cases as well as any other crimes that occur in the community where we have suspects outstanding. Uh, a lot of uh, work and effort has been taking place again with the partnerships that we've developed uh, with the community to continue to make Wichita a, a safe community. We still ask that citizens be mindful of practicing good crime prevention techniques. Uh, last year we did see a slight rise in our auto thefts. Those are indicative of uh, weather-related um, auto warm-ups in which uh, suspects are stealing vehicles based on the availability of unintended, unintended warnings. Uh, again, this uh, 2014 was a a challenging but successful year uh, for the investigation division and again we continue to ask for uh, the public support in uh, working and trying to solve unsolved cases. Thank you. <clears throat> well as you see 2014 has been a uh, challenging year full of opportunities uh, but I'd like to first take a moment uh, to thank the men and women of the Wichita Police Department both commissioned and non-commissioned for their work and, and efforts and their ex most certainly hard work in 2014. We have an ambitious 2015 ahead of us and we have hit the ground running. 
the organizational assessment is finalized and has been presented. As Deputy Chief John Sears <coughs> said, now the heavy lifting begins. We have begun the task at, of looking at the findings and also to implement the findings and the recommendations. We look forward to building and enhancing our community policing philosophy. And also we will continue to keep the community dialogue open. As I've stated in a number of the Fer No Ferguson Here meetings, uh, the dialogue is going on. We have to keep that continuing and we will do our part as far as departmental members. We'll also continue to be an open and transparent police agency. We will continue to work on the implementation of the body worn cameras. As Deputy Chief John Spears said, we took an icy trip to Fort Worth and we brought back a lot of good information from their department. We are also on track to meet our goal for full implementation in field services by the end of 2015. And also we brought a sampling of the body worn camera for you to also to look at at your leisure. With that, I will now uh, invite my executive staff back up and we will now take questions. Thank you all for coming and listening. When you say full implementation, did you mean full implementation of body cameras given this all out as initially announced? Yeah. Full implementation meaning field services. You know, all patrol functions there. And we've patrol covered officers. patrol officers. <coughs> yes. It's our original plan that we put out before. Can you talk just about how big of a project that is for this department? All of you have been on uh, the department for quite a while. And just talking about this is a big change that we're going to see in our department in the next year and, and how daunting yes. that is as a project. Well, obviously, you know, anytime you talk a full year or plus to get to a project and get to its completion there's a lot of work to be done you know John talked about the moving parts of having the right personnel the right number of people to handle just the request for information the uh, maintenance of the equipment and also looking at professional standards at Fort Worth you know just because we had cameras we also have to review the video footage as well that also requires additional footage this is a big endeavor, We're still working on the funding, obviously, so there's a lot of moving parts, policy as well. Uh, but while we're doing that, like you said, this is daunting. We haven't seen anything like this before, but our men and women are prepared to have the cameras. We want those cameras, and we're working hard to get it, but it's, it's taking a lot of work. You know, this is on top of what these gentlemen have talked about during the year as well. So. We've got to have business as usual and still <coughs> get to the cameras. Chief, do you know yet how many people you will have to hire to, I, I know you guys talked about the storage and reviewing, do you have any numbers on that yet? No, but <coughs> our trip to Fort Worth opened our eyes. Uh, just like I said, they uh, had a extra personnel and professional standards. Uh, they had a couple of bodies for the uh, just the ongoing request as well as handling maintenance requests. This is more than the couple we were asking for originally. So we're still going to have to, this is a lot of moving parts <clears throat> that we'll have to analyze along the way. But uh, just like we've said, you know, when you roll out a project like this, it's daunting. We got to make sure it's done right. And, and the citizens have to have, uh, you know, at least know that we've done it right and have or feel we've done it right. In, in the past you guys have talked a little bit about how so many different cities around the country are requesting body cameras and, yes. and there may be an issue with getting them. Yes. Where are you at with that now? Well, and uh, along with our uh, visit to Fort Worth, we've also had a technology summit where we visited with Taser and some of the other companies. I mean, right now we're still early in the process of funding and looking. Now, with some of the vendors we've talked about, I don't think it as as big an issue as having to wait, uh, but we'll see once we get into the part of our uh, purchasing process and getting into that and seeing. Cause so you haven't ordered them yet? No, not as yet. We're still working out the fine tune of cost and things like that. Yeah. And can you guys, can you talk about the homicides? Again, I have a couple questions on that. Um, homicides up. 
for 2014. I guess your reaction to that, I mean, is, it, is there some, something that causes that? I mean, I don't know if you can put a finger on that. But. No, that's, that's a, a very difficult question to uh, answer. Um, certainly, uh, yeah, we, we wish we could uh, determine what causes those homicides. They're violent crimes. They impact our community uh, greatly. Um, we do have a, a dedicated staff to uh, working vigorously to uh, solve each and every homicide that occurs, um, as well as uh, putting community, community education out there. Um, again, our, our focus is, is always on uh, violent crimes when they uh, impact our community, and, and we, know, we understand that impact. So again, we work vigilantly to try to solve each and every case. How many of the 26 are related to domestic violence? Um, I do not have the, uh, the numbers right now in terms of which, uh, which of those cases are directly impacted by or involved in domestic violence, but I can, uh, if you get with me some time after the briefing, I can give you some more information. Do you think drug use is, contributes to any of this? You know, we've talked about meth, we've talked about K2, all that stuff. I mean, are you seeing any kind of link between drugs and homicides? Uh, I can't comparatively say that that's the, uh, the case. Uh, each and every case is different and has its own unique circumstances to it. Um, uh, it's certainly something that we look, look at uh, in those cases, but definitively I can't tell you that that's a, 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 a factor uh, in each of those cases. We did hear some numbers of gang arrests. We obviously heard some efforts in the hot team. Can you talk about how that all contributes to maybe lower crime? I don't know if it's in a direct correlation, but obviously if you're getting gang members off the streets, if you're getting homeless out of areas, maybe we're seeing less crime. Is that a ripple effect that kind of comes with the territory when you're seeing success in those areas? I, I, again, I think each and every case is different. Um, uh, you know, it's right now we, I don't think we have the numbers to uh, quantify and say that the, the homeless, uh, being homeless, has a direct correlation to our, our homicides. Um, certainly, again, each and every case is unique. Uh, we look at gang crimes. Certainly, uh, <coughs> a lot of the crimes that we talked about uh, today are violent crimes. Uh, some of which um, those crimes could result in homicides, and it's important for us to really stay on top of that and address any violent offenders that we have in the community, particularly when we know that they're uh, preying on innocent victims. Incidents uh, in Old Town appear to have lessened. I know that there have been procedures implemented in that area with businesses uh, coming together as well. Ha have, have there, are the numbers actually down there? What, what, what can you say is working in the Old Town area that might be put in place in other areas of the city? Yeah. Gavin, you want to talk well, about this? Part of that would be, I can go ahead. Uh, part of that would be yes on. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yes, part of that is on on nights of the week. Certain nights of the week, we do beef up uh, officers down in that area. We send our scat teams down there. We send additional officers into the old town area. Uh, as summertime comes on, I do anticipate that uh, activity will pick up. Uh, the cold uh, keeps people inside a little bit more. Uh, but as summertime comes on, more people will be out. So we will obviously um, address that and, and send more officers, uh, some of the down there to, uh, to assist with that. Uh, in regards to some of the special teams that I talked about, that has, we've seen a great impact uh, in those areas that we've implemented those teams and to direct their efforts towards uh, certain types of crimes that we're seeing occur in those areas. So. We will utilize our resources and those those locations as need be. How much of cam the additional cameras down there help the police? Um, we're seeing. I mean, it is nice to be able to go and get footage from them uh, as we can, um, or when incidents occur. So that does help. Chief Mosley, in terms of body cameras and the issue of officer-involved shootings, obviously publicized across the nation. Can you give us any uh, perspective in terms of how many, if it increased in this year report, in terms of officers involved in shootings here in Wichita? As far as the camera perspective? No, 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 just in terms of obviously we're making efforts to bring those implement cameras in, but as far as our own officer involved shooting data, what did it look like for 2014? Uh, well, our officer involved shootings, we had four uh, for 2014. 
uh, one has been cleared by the DA and three are still uh, pending. Uh, so uh, that's the status as of right now and obviously I can't go into too much detail uh, since they're with the DA's office. <coughs> Would it have helped to have those body cameras to help say, okay, this is exactly what happened? Um, it's, that's a hard question to answer because even when we went to Fort Worth, uh, they found issues with some of their shootings and with cameras. Um, sometimes it didn't catch the right angle. Mm -hmm. Uh, sometime a one camera might not have been uh, working and another was working but it caught something else we can hear it but it didn't catch the situation I'm hopeful that they would capture but again each incident will be uh, uh, different and I'd rather have the cameras than not at least to at least be in the ball game so these will have audio and video. yes okay. do you mind showing us uh, I would love to. There's the case. <laughs> <laughs> and as far as, as, straight, as, so, far as the trend, though, she, I mean, yes. from previous years, was there an increase, a decrease? Do you have that data? Uh, do you have that time? Increase on officer-involved shootings? We can, get that, we can get that for you. I don't have I'm the... I'm not prepared to talk okay. about that right now. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. we'll get that for you. In Fort Worth, do they have any data that... Because uh, I, th I think one of, the, one of the questions that the public has is investigations into these situations takes a long time because there's a lot of information to go but with the body cameras in Fort Worth have there been any uh, indications that the process had been expediated or sped up no and John you want to talk to that I think it was relatively right. we, well I think well we actually asked the commanders that down there in, in regards to how many uh, shootings that they had uh, that were actually on camera and the impact of that, if I understand your question correctly, the uh, obviously if there's video footage of things, that's obviously beneficial. But as the chief alluded to, uh, in some instances, depending upon placement of the camera, uh, they have the Oakley system that, if you can show me those. Here's the... This is a camera, and in one incident that uh, we learned of is that there was a shooting and that the uh, officers were behind cover, and the cover that they were behind, if this was the cover, the video camera, uh, even though the officer could see, the video camera was blocked. There's a lot of challenges to doing this, and what we're trying to do is figure out the best way and best placement for these to, to most likely capture. There's problems putting them on the center. There's problems putting them on the lapel. There's all sorts of challenges with it, but I think that any time that there is video evidence of any type of uh, incident, I think that that's beneficial and would obviously go towards the uh, conclusion that's made by whatever legal determining body there are, whether it be the district attorney or the grand jury, so. Did they say whether or not officer-involved shootings had decreased since they got the camera? I, I did not ask that question, I'm sorry. How, do you know how long they've had them? Oh, for approximately a year and a half to this scale. <coughs> Couple more questions. Well, just, since you were down there, and I don't know if we talked to you, like how different was this for you? Was it a different, we've been talking about this a lot, but was seeing it in action really helpful with what maybe we're going to implement here? Sure, I mean, that's, that's the whole reason we went down there. We had to see it, a department that actually put this into this scale. Um, we can make phone calls and we can read about it, but if you go down there and actually see the system and talk to the people and drill down on this with an agency that's currently doing it, it's obviously beneficial. How much are you having to perhaps retool your role out having seen an operation of that size, of your anticipated size in action? The, like the, chief already, the chief already hit on the main thing, and that's the, the personnel. It, it, it's going to be very demanding and uh, uh, we're going to need some personnel in place to manage the system. One more question? Uh, well, this seems... Ten Come years on. ago this week, Chief, since you're here now, we had a sizable arrest in our community. And yeah. I mean, just looking back at that, I mean, I know all of you guys are here, and we're going to talk about it a lot this week, but can we, are you amazed that that much time has come since that time? I mean, I remember being here and, and having to be a big... Deal. and now here we are 10 years later 10 years later and I was just thinking that uh, today you know here we are 10 years in in 05 I mean or back then 10 years has gone by 
But uh, again, that was a significant piece of the Wichita Police Department history here. Uh, John was there in investigations, I was as well, and I think all of, all of us were here, but um, to have that go on, especially during the investigation itself, and not knowing and putting the pieces together, I think that was the biggest piece and ultimately the capture. Well, we've lost Kenny since then, so I don't know if there's a way to highlight certainly what he did to make that arrest happen and, and how instrumental he was in, in yeah. making that day become a reality. Yeah, Kenny was the BTK investigation, um, to, for lack of better words. Uh, I worked for Kenny when I was a detective. He's been in, he had the, had the experience all that time. And, uh, you know, if out of anybody and talking through him during the investigation, you know, he was steady. He would give you thoughts, he would be on the trail, he worked hard, um, and, and not to keep this going, Kenny was that investigation for us. Great. I have one Great. Great. Right right now. in general, beyond BTK, people may see an increase in homicides and rapes and robberies or something, and I think, oh my gosh, what's going on? What would you tell those people if they just look at those numbers and kind of be taken back by the increases? Yeah. Again, I would look at the overall crime rate of what's going on in Wichita. And I think as Deputy Chief Ramza has uh, mentioned, it's hard to speculate about how and when a homicide will occur. Uh, just be assured that uh, the men and women of the Wichita Police Department are working hard daily out there. Captain Seiler mentioned the fact that we, have crime, we recognize our crime trends, that we stay on top of those, and also we're looking at uh, technology. Uh, as far as analytics that will help us as well, crime analysts that will read some and maybe help in predicting where a crime could possibly occur. So we're looking at a number of things in 2015. That's why I said not only the camera project, but the year itself with uh, implementing the parts of the organizational assessment and some of the technology things that we have on the horizon. This is going to be a uh, year full of opportunities and obviously it will be challenging. Thank you, Chief. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Okay, what I'm showing you right here is the actual camera that, they, that is mounted on the officer. Um, it is mounted in various ways, okay? You can mount it on your collar, and I can't get into my collar. But you would mount this, this piece on the outside of your collar, and it's magnetized, and it pulls against your shirt on your collar, and then you just pop it on there. And so you can see the majority of these mounts are mounting on the collar, the neck, or some, some way that, uh, in that location. Now the only thing that is different, and you can wear multiple mounts, okay? You can put the glasses on and you can mount that, that camera right up there. Anytime your head moves, it will move with it, okay? Um, we, what we seen or, or we talked to Fort Worth about was the, fact, the simple fact that sometimes you, you might need multiple mounts. And that is because if they go inside a building, they have dark glasses on, which these lenses change, that they may rotate that up. So a lot of times they will multi have multiple mounts and they'll just pop the camera off and put it there. Um, as uh, the chief mentioned, um, and Deputy Chief, uh, there are times when a camera gets blocked. If an officer's pulling out or something, or, and you can see from here, if we were to mount them there, it is totally different there as well because anytime you block that, that visibility from the center of their chest. So we're looking at trying to mount up here. There's another mount, here's a, a collar mount, and they can put it around their neck and pop it on that way as well, okay? There's, there, they, Taser has offered several different places to mount these cameras, so we're looking at them, uh, how many mounts, I think there's like five of them that they do offer. So that part of it is the camera. This part is a recording device, okay? They, when an officer gets out or what have you, gets on a scene, they would hit the button and it would begin to record. Okay, it will record and store in this here. At the end of their shift, the officer would come back to the station. It also carries, this has a battery in it to, uh, that they will have to charge and when they pop it into the um, station here, it will download all that information and then it's sent, okay? Uh, they not only do that, but they drop in the camera and they'll pop that in there and it, it charges as well as downloads information off of, of the system. This here is a, it looks like a cell phone. Uh, it is a viewing device. You can view what you have filmed on there, okay? So that is another uh, 
part of this, uh, you can, it will operate without it or with it. Okay. Um, I think I've covered everything. Just charging uh, things for the officers at home. They are to take those home uh, as far as a, just to charge the battery on it. So you can review it, but not edit it, correct? You cannot edit it. Will you, will you have to look at every officer's day or do you just, if there's some kind of controversy, then you go back and look at it? They will catalog, those officers will catalog mm -hmm. those calls. And um, the, as they download it, that information, you can go search that information and stuff as they're cataloged. Um, and, and that's some of the things that we spoke with Fort Worth. How do you catalog those? Because obviously information, there's so much. And you put 400 officers on that system, it, uh, there's a lot of data being transferred. And to storage of that, and that is the real problem or thing that we're looking at, cost associated with it is the storage. Yes, sir. On the uh, cameras itself, I'm assuming that it's, it's more of a wide angle lens to get a, a broad view of things. But uh, is there a way to zoom in on something that you want to see closer if, if that's a, a point of interest? If they walk up to it. Uh, that is, it is kept broad. They don't have the ability to, to edit it or any of that, that at all. So After the fact, if it was being reviewed, is there a possibility of, uh, of zooming in closer? It, mm, with that, uh, you're, you're not doing it with the camera itself. Uh, it would be with some type of um, you know, software or what have you.